Hello, hello, and happy new year. What's going on? I am, this is, we're gonna keep this one short and simple. I'm literally chilling in sweats in the studio. That's how random this is, but I made this patch on peak. Listen to this. You can basically make this pretty much any synth. You hear all that movement? Beautiful. I just got super amped up on this. There's a couple things that I wanna run by you that are pretty fun, creative ways to modulate sounds on a synthesizer. Not just Peak, yes I work at Novation, but you could do this on whatever you want as long as it has a few of the parameters that this synthesizer happens to have. Most importantly, I have three oscillators, but honestly, I'm using it in this, I, I, I really don't wanna play this track, but for the sake of transparency, not all music is good. So this is where I was using this track, or this patch. God, it sounds so bad now. It sounded way better earlier, I swear. Unmixed everything completely raw, right? But I was just kind of tweaking this and I actually had it in this really cheesy sawtooth setup. And the sawtooth setup gave it this almost like 80s, Twin Peaks, 90s, like, wait for me, Betty, kind of vibe. Like that weird cheesy horn sound. You know what I'm talking about? But I decided to try Pulse with and ended up with this. Sounds a little better to me. Turn the filter down. The real heavy lifting here is happening on oscillator three. Oscillator one and two are essentially the same. They're just Pulse with uh, oscillators here, the wave shapes, right? There's a little bit of modulation going to their shape. So they're kind of going from a very narrow Pulse width to more of a traditional square sound. If we go and just listen to oscillator one. Oh, right. Um, how can I turn off? I guess I can go here. So this is the one that gets really fun. But here, this is just oscillator one. You hear how it's, it's kind of opening up. Same with oscillator two. But a little later. And how I'm able to do this is I have its manual shape amount all the way down. So with it all the way down, it's gonna take a really long time for the mod envelopes attack, which is what's moving the pulse width open. It's moving that pulse width from being completely closed or so narrow that we just can't hear it into an audible pulse width. Are you with me so far? I don't even know if I'm with myself anymore. But those two aren't the ones that are doing the heavy lifting. If I go back and just reset this, turn off oscillator one and oscillator two. Oscillator three is where the magic happens. This is just oscillator three. Here it kind of starts in a weird way going through these octaves with just one note. Right, what's, what's happening is I have this set to a, where's it at? A wave shape, and the wave shape happens to be octaves. I can change this to, to whatever, let's do chords. And now you hear it's shifting through chords, right? And if I go to, let's say didgeridoo, all that's happening is that LFO2 is modulating oscillator three's volume. If we go to our mod matrix, LFO2 positively affect oscillator three's level. If this is all the way down, nothing is gonna happen. Oscillator three is off, but by turning this up, you can see, oh yeah, ignore my thumb. That's nail polish, long story. You can see that oscillator, or LFO2 here, that shape which is being synced to the tempo, in this case we're at 130 BPM, is what's plucking open oscillator three. Because without this, I wanted this sound here, in here, right? But I wanted it to be more rhythmic, almost like a, another synthesizer on top. So I turned down oscillator three, and then just turn this up. 
magic. That's this here. There's even a fade time, which will fade how much LFO2's um, depth is being applied to whatever destinations it is assigned in the mod matrix. I cannot believe I said that in one go. See how it takes a while for it to kind of slowly fade in, almost as another envelope, another attack, like an amp envelope just for the LFOs. That's what fade time is going to be. It's basically just an attack to a full sustain. So that's pretty cool, right? Not bad. Got some effects on here, easy peasy. But where I'm running into my issue is that the way that this is set up, LFO2 on oscillator 3, again, is doing most of the heavy lifting. If you go back and listen to this just raw, this is how I saved the preset so I can come back to it. But what's happening that kind of bugs me is that I have LFO2 set to common, which means all, you, uh, how do I say this? I've kind of talked about this in this video here, but basically all eight voices essentially have their own LFO2. If I set LFO2 common to on, all eight of those LFOs, all eight of those LFO2s are gonna move in sync, acting as just one giant LFO, kind of like, a, like an old synthesizer, like an old vintage one, right? Thankfully for digital ones, you have a lot more control, but sometimes you don't want that much control. And right now, I'm walking this fine line of, do I want that control or not? Because with this on, where all the LFOs act as one, I cannot add notes without interrupting the other LFOs, what's the word? The other LFOs um, position in their, in their movement. Does that make sense? So if LFO, if I play a chord and LFO2 starts ramping up and then I play another note, it resets. You hear that? It doesn't go all the way high like this. I can cut it short. I'll never let it go up, right? So what I have to do, I can set it to off, but then all LFOs can fall out of sync and out of phase with each other because they are synced to the tempo. But when I'm playing it freehand like this, they're all kind of on their own. So listen to this. Do you hear how their peaks are kind of like brink, 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 brink? It's really cool, but when you're, at least when I'm trying to make a bit more of a, um, right on the money, in sync, in, <laughs> when I'm trying to make an in sync track, <laughs> when I'm trying to make a track that everything is perfectly in sync, I don't want those little things falling off, which is why the chords on this, which you can't see, are just like super blocky, just burp, 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 burp. you know, it's, what is it? Eight bars of just like two chords straight across, just going. Because I, I would love to. then let all these higher harmonics just really play out or say I want to add a bass, right? I just realized I didn't even tell you what LFO one is doing. So by default on peak, the shape amount has a um, LFO one kind of pre-routed to the shape amount and I can choose by how much it's going. I have it set to negative 64. LFO one sync rate is also set to 16 beats. Very, very long. That's basically, um, I'm gonna say like a bar. And then I have it going on a down ramp, but I have it set negative. So it's basically pushing the shape amount. If we were to turn this off and just listen to oscillator two again, turn the filter up, go to manual. 
right? But because this wave shape, which we're listening to right now is oscillator, oscillator three, this wave shape, if I move manual, it's going through the octaves. But I can assign LFO one to do that for me. So you can see there, it just reset. And there lies another issue or another, um, none of these are issues. Nothing is an issue, right? That is just something that you, you label something as. Uh, another, another fork in the road of, of decision-making is we choose whether we want LFO two to be common or not. Right, we already ran into that issue. Now, well, do you want LFO one to be common or not? So I have LFO one set to, yeah, which means it's sweeping through the octaves, won't let it get. It won't go all the way through, but if I turn it off, but you see how they're all kind of, everywhere now even if I just hold this chord you can hear them resetting randomly Anyway, that's the patch I made on Peak just now, and I wanted to share it with you. Um, that's really it. Just weird modulation of LFO2 being synced, LFO1 being synced, moving the wave shape amount of an oscillator to give it a bit of movement, but more importantly, taking an LFO and using it to modulate the oscillator's volume to pretend to be a, almost a lead line that follows whatever chords you're playing. Because without oscillator three, we listen to this. Oh, loser. Let me just reset this mod. All right, without oscillator three, this is what we got. All oh, right, I also have the uh, I wanted to emphasize, man, this video is never ending. This is not quick at all. I wanted to emphasize the plucky sound, so I also sent LFO2 to, to the filter cutoff. So let's take that off as well. So this is where we were basically started at. Right, and I was like, oh, I want some high tone register, but I was trying to keep it to just this desk when making music and not use these synthesizers. So I was like, let me add a lead. I was like, well, let me make this lead do something. So it's not just, it's not just following the, the pads. Whoa, that's way too loud. So that's when I went into mod envelope. And I said, let's turn that up. There it is, you can hear it now, coming in, awesome. But see, it still kind of falls with everything when the filter is down. So that's why I went again and I said, Let's send that same LFO2, which is opening up the volume of oscillator three and send it to the filter cutoff just a little bit. Just to emphasize that plucky sound. Right, so if I turn this really far down, I can turn this up. So it still catches it. But if I ride the filter up, and another final, final, final note. I think this can be done with just two oscillators. I think the second oscillator here is adding a bit too much. I think when I put this into a mix, it might be a little too overpowering, as you heard earlier in this god-awful demo. 
yeah, we're not going there again. Um, it's just too too rich, right? That's kind of the problem I had with an OB6 one time when I owned it for a while was it sounded so good, but as soon as I tried to fit it into a mix, it was very overpowering. So watch second mouse later up. Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily needed. So anyway. Yo, good to see you. As always, I'll see you next week. I hope if you got some time, stop by and say what's up. But uh, until then, you already know the drill. If you want to support the channel, actually, by all means, check out some merch I sell here. 20% goes to nonprofits helping clean our oceans. Um, as always, I appreciate you more than you know. And until next week, you already know the drill. Share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace.